This video is going to go over how to multiply and divide with rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers can be positive or negative. They can be whole numbers, fractions, or decimals. The first thing we're going to look at is how do you multiply with fractions? Okay, the rule is you just simply go straight across. You should multiply the numerator times the numerator and then the denominator times the denominator. Also, when you finish, you should check to see if you could reduce or simplify your answer. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to do the numerator times the numerator, and then the denominator times the denominator. There's one example already done for uh, you on your paper. If you look at the first one, it says 3 fourths times 2 fifths. If I go straight across, 3 times 2 is 6, and then straight across, 4 times 5 is 20. So I'm just going to draw a line showing that I'm going straight across. Wow, that was super big. Let's change my pen size. 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 5 is 20. Then, 6 over 20 right here both of these numbers are even, so I could divide them both by 2 to simplify or reduce. So I'm going to fill in divide by 2, divide by 2, and that's how I get my final answer, which is 3 over 10. Now the next one is set up. It says 3 fifths times 2 thirds. So again, I should just simply go straight across in both directions. On the top, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 5 is 15. 6 and 15, they're not both even. However, they can both be simplified because they can be divided by 3. So I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by 3, and then my final answer would be 2 over 5. Looking at the bottom, we're still going to work with fractions, but this says, how would you multiply a fraction with a whole number? The rule's pretty simple. All you need to do is put a 1 under your whole number to make it a fraction, and then we still just multiply straight across. So I'm going to highlight that part. Put a 1 under the whole number. And then multiply straight across. Okay, again, the first one's already done. I am going to fill in that 1. I'm going to place a 1 under the 6 because that's the step you do to turn the whole number into a fraction. After you do that, then we follow the steps from above, which said go straight across. Numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. The thing that happens now is when you look at the answer right here, it's 12 over 7. This is an improper fraction. We want to simplify or reduce it and turn it into a mixed number. And the way we do that is I create a division problem. Top number goes inside the box, 12. Bottom number goes outside the box. Then 12 divided by 7 can only go one time. And when you subtract 7, you get 5. Your remainder goes up into your numerator section and your denominator stays the same. So 1 and 5 sevenths would be your final answer. Okay, I'm going to try this next one right here. Again, we have a whole number of 4 times 3 eighths. Step 1 says put a 1 under the whole number to create your fraction. Then step two, multiply straight across, numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. When you do that, four times three is 12 and one times eight is eight. Again, I have an improper fraction, so I need to set up a division problem to simplify. The top number goes inside the box, bottom number goes outside. Eight can go into 12 one time. 1 times 8 is 8. 
you subtract and you get four left over. The remainder goes on top. So I have four eighths. The denominator stayed the same. Four eighths actually is the same as one half. So my final answer would just be one and one half. And I'll put that up here, one and one half. Multiplying with decimals, a quick review of that. It's not important to line up the decimals. You simply just multiply like normal and pretend like the decimals aren't there. You have to count the number of decimal places that the problem has. So that's the thing I wanna show you guys on this one. I need to count all the numbers behind the decimal. There's a four, there's a five, and there's a six. So that's why I put D3 over here on the side because I wanna make sure that I put three digits behind the decimal once I complete my answer. So down here at the bottom, you can see one, two, three spots that I moved back behind the decimal whenever I go to fill in my final answer. One last thing that uh, we wanna talk about when multiplying with multiple digits, after you finish with one digit and you skip over to the second one, you want to put in either a placeholder zero or an X. When you move over to this third digit, now I've scooted over two numbers, so I either need two placeholder zeros or two X's before you start writing in your answer. Okay, the next thing wants to remind you guys, how can you tell if the answer is gonna be positive or negative when you multiply or divide? So we have a little thing we like to do in my class. It's called Math Dude. You can draw a face. The eyes are gonna be represented with two negative signs and the mouth is going to be represented or the nose is gonna be represented with a plus sign or a positive sign. When you look at the numbers in your question, you have two numbers in the problem and then your third would be the answer. So that's why we use three symbols right here to identify the answer. If you have negative times negative, those cancel each other out and the answer becomes positive. Or if you look at my math dude face, if I already used up these two negative signs, the final answer would have to be positive. So I'm gonna go underneath um, each one of these little faces or each one of these problems. I'm gonna draw my math dude. And then I'm gonna put in, if I think the answer is positive or negative because that can help me out with multiple choice when I get a question. Um, the first one, when you look at it, it says negative 24 times positive eight. So I have a negative number times a positive number. Whoops. So I have negative 24 times positive eight. That means my answer has to be negative. The next one has positive 56, uh, positive 5 sixths and negative 2 fifths. That means the answer has to be negative. Then the last one has negative 14.9 times negative 4.27. Therefore, my answer would have to be positive. The last thing um, we're gonna move over and we're gonna start talking about dividing now. So the way you divide a fraction, first of all, we don't wanna keep mixed numbers. We wanna turn those into improper fractions if there happens to be any. Convert your mixed number to an improper fraction. Next step, flip the second fraction upside down and change the division symbol to be a multiply. Then once that happens, we simply just follow the multiplication rules. Okay, so here's my first um, fraction. I am gonna flip this second one upside down. So now it's gonna be three over two. I'm gonna change the division symbol to be multiply. And we never change the first one, it's gonna stay the same. 
Once I do all that, then I simply just go straight across. Three times three is nine. And ten time, um, five times two is 10. So my final answer would be nine tenths. I'm gonna add the word right here that I did flip those two things around. The second one incorporates the mixed number, which we wanna get rid of and make it an improper fraction. And in order to do that, you would multiply three times four, that makes 12. Then I would add the numerator, which is a two, and 12 plus two is 14. So now my number is 14 and the denominator stays the same as three. Then remember we are going to flip this fraction upside down. So they trade places. The, th the five is now gonna be on top and the two is on bottom. And then change that multiply, um, divide to be a multiply. Once that happens, remember you just go straight across 14 times 5 is 70, and 3 times 2 is 6. When you set up your division problem to reduce that, because this is a huge improper fraction, um, 70 goes inside the box. 6 can go into 70 11 times, that's 66, with 4 leftovers. And earlier we said whatever the remainder is, we're gonna bring it up and use it to build our fraction. Four goes on top, six goes on bottom. Four six could actually be simplified, so my final answer would be 11 and two thirds. Okay, one last thing with dividing. We wanna look at dividing with decimals. Okay, it's fine for this first number to be a decimal, I don't want this last one to be a decimal. So I'm gonna set up my division problem. I'm gonna make the division box. The first number goes inside, 31.773, and the second number goes on the outside. I want to move that decimal point until that first number becomes a whole, so I only need to move it once. Whatever you do to the outside number, you do to the inside number. Then I want to take this new decimal and I want to move it straight up into my answer. So I want to put the decimal point right there. And now I'm ready to divide. Um, 51 is really close to 50. And it can go in six times to start out. Six times 51 is 306. When you subtract, that is gonna be 11, bring down my seven. 51 can go into 117 only twice. 51 times two is 102. When you subtract from here, you get 15. Bring down your next digit, which was a three. And then 51 can go into 153 three times. And it's a perfect match, 153 zero remainder. So my final answer on this would be 6.23. Now the next one, you notice this first number is a whole number. The second one is a decimal. So we wanna set it up the same way. I wanna put the first number inside the box, the second number on the outside, if the number on the outside has the decimal point, we need to move it to the end so it becomes a whole number. I need to move it one time. This number that's inside the box, I don't see a decimal point right now, so I need to place my own at the end of the number. 26.0, that means the same as 26. Now I can bump that decimal over one and then move it straight up into my answer section of my division problem. When I start dividing, 25 can go into um, 26 one time. I'm gonna minus 25. That has a one remainder. K 
k, I need to bring down the zero. 25 cannot go into 10. I have to show that by placing a zero up inside my answer. I need to also show that I subtracted zero because zero times 25 is zero. Okay, I have a 10 remainder. I need to add my own zero now and bring it down. 25 can go into 100 four times. And then that's a perfect match of 100 and you subtract and get zero remainder. It's very important that this zero is up in your answer. When we couldn't divide into 10, we had to show that with place value. If not, we would have just thought 1.4. That's not the same answer as 10.4. So make sure you don't go too fast in your division problem and forget small little steps like that.